What's up guys, Justin Morgan here, carved up, <laughs> vegan muscle, and today I want to start a series of videos, and this series will be covering um, basic principles of dieting for uh, primarily looking at the topic of like bodybuilding and uh, just, just general muscle growth, um, not necessarily like competitive bodybuilding, but bodybuilding in the sense that you're growing muscle, in the sense that you're um, building your body, I guess you'd say. And there are just a few principles that I like to cover, um, ma mainly five uh, that, that come up, and, and in order of importance so that you guys can prioritize um, different aspects of the diet, I'm going to show you this chart. And this chart is uh, being used from uh, Renaissance Periodization and Dr. Mike Israetel and Nick Shaw, who are diet coaches for a lot of athletes in various types of performance from powerlifting to CrossFit and that kind of thing. And um, the, the, the views and the recommendations that I'm making in this video do not reflect Renaissance Periodization, Nick Shaw, or Dr. Mike Israetel in uh, most ways. Um, but the chart, I think, does break down uh, really well the principles of dieting. So um, in order of importance, you can look at it, and, and I agree with what they have here, that um, calories in versus calories out. Is, is the biggest factor in dieting. Next would be macronutrients. Following that would be nutrient timing, then food composition, and then lastly, supplements. Uh, today's video is going to cover specifically the topic of calorie balance, and I'm not really going to go into any others. I've tried to make videos on this in the past, and it's just so long that there's no way to do it, so I'm only going to talk about the topic of calorie balance. Calorie balance would be the most important principle, and as you can see from the chart, calorie balance constitutes the very largest part of all dieting principles. Unless you are competing at a really high level, um, that's likely the only principle that will, you really legitimately need to worry about. There are some formulas used on patients, residents, in the clinical setting, but a better method for the average person would be simply to track the food that you eat and drink, and not to miss out on things like liquids that also have calories. Um, for three normal days, and even better, a whole week if you can, and log those daily intakes into something like MyFitnessPal or Chronometer. Both are fine, both are free, and relatively user-friendly and easy to use. After that, take the calories you ate throughout those days and average them together. Add all seven days together and divide by seven, and however many, or, or however many days you tracked. If you tracked for three days, you'd add all three calorie intakes together and divide by three. At that, this point, you should have a baseline of the number of calories that you generally are consuming each day, or at least that you're consuming over a week divided by, by that many. As an active person, as an athlete, um, the number will hopefully be 2,500 or more for women and 300 or more for men. If so, then you have plenty of room to drop your calories if you need to or increase them or whatever the, the, the need is. If you're not hitting those numbers and, and you're trying to gain weight, then I would highly suggest you start increasing your caloric intake. If uh, you're trying to lose weight and you're dramatically below those numbers, well, then uh, that's not really that great of a sign. Um, if your normal caloric intake is half of what those numbers are and you're not already losing weight, then you should not be dieting. You should instead be working on incrementally increasing your metabolism by increasing your caloric intake by something like 50 to 100 calories per week. For anyone else, you would start, if you're looking to lose weight, by reducing your caloric intake by 10%. Same thing if you're trying to gain weight. Take whatever your basic metabolic um, numbers there that you got from that average and increase it by 10%. So for example, someone that finds that they eat 3,000 calories per day will multiply 3,000 by 10% or 3,000 by 0 0.10 or 0 0.1 really, and you'll get 300 calories. And so if you reduce your caloric intake by 300 calories, that'll bring you down to 2,700 calories per day. Ideally, this, weight, this will result in weight loss of about one pound every two weeks. 
A 10% reduction in calories will barely be noticeable so you won't feel hungry all the time and you won't see a great deal of performance or muscle losses. Instead, you may find that you actually continue to make increases. I have in the past when I've done that. Additionally, adding in some type of extra activity cardio beyond what you've already been doing will help to create a calorie deficit as well beyond just reducing calories in the diet. For most people, low impact activities such as biking or swimming, in my opinion, helps facilitate recovery and impede performance less than higher impact activities like running or sprinting. I personally try to keep my training as sport specific as is beneficial and attempt to limit anything that would prevent its prioritization in my training. This is a broad topic itself for another for another video, but suffice to say that cardio activity can also help increase your caloric expenditure. I do actually do some other types of higher intensity cardio that apply to strongman, um, but again, that's for another, another video. Additionally, with calorie balance, it's worth noting that weight and fat loss is not always linear. If you look at most people's weight loss on a chart, you will see a line that goes up and down from day to day. But ideally, the line trends down over time if you're trying to lose weight, trends up if you're trying to gain weight. Most of us will like to see a nice linear chart that goes in a straight downward line or upward line for those that are trying to gain weight, but sadly, it just doesn't work that way. It is also worth noting that most people's weight loss will stall before they reach their goal, and an additional caloric reduction will be needed. I would not advise someone to make these additional reduction, reductions too quickly because you may find that you run out of calories to take away before you reach your goal. The longer you take to lose weight, the better your performance and muscle preservation will be. So we want to generally take our time when trying to cut weight. We don't want to make do a whole bunch of weight loss. So maybe uh, up to one pound per week is advisable if you're relatively lean. Now if you're very obese or, or you're pretty overweight, then uh, losing up to two pounds a week, you know, as an active athlete, uh, that might not be so bad. But for somebody that's relatively lean and trying to move down a weight class or trying to, you know, just lose some body fat, then one pound of per week would kind of be the maximum, I think, with, that would be best for overall um, athletic performance and maintaining strength and muscle while cutting or dropping weight. And the same thing for somebody that's trying to gain weight. You don't really want to gain one pound per week. Um, gaining a couple pounds per month or two to three pounds per month is, is probably a good round thing to get so that you're not gaining too much fat. Now, that's also why we don't do any more than the 10% increase or 10% decrease in calories because we don't want to gain too much fat while gaining muscle and you don't want to lose too much muscle while losing fat. You want to keep those types of things to a minimum. So uh, that's just the basic principles broken down. Hope you guys enjoyed it and found it informative. Upcoming videos will cover the rest of those principles that I mentioned. You guys take it easy and I'll talk to you next time.